Hey, Jeff Cartwright, Cartwright Landscaping. I want to take an opportunity to uh, share with you all some helpful tips for getting your yard ready for the spring season. Uh, we've taken the time to put together a bunch of quick clip videos showing uh, a lot of the things that we've learned, a lot of efficiencies, uh, how we do stuff as a landscape company to make things move along and get things looking great. Uh, wanted to share them with you, whether you're you know, do-it-yourselfers and you do everything, whether you have some time on the weekend, um, however you want to approach it, we thought this might be a great video to put together for a viewing audience. We'd appreciate uh, your time and hopefully it helps you all out. Thanks. Over here we have a slightly overgrown hedge. You have new growth coming in. This is a Ligustrum hedge. And a quick trick with this to get a perfect shape hedge uh, and a perfectly level hedge is use the mortar joints on this brick house behind us. Uh, you can do the same with siding, just look for the horizontal joints. So that's what we're gonna do here. And then the front, you just kinda, you just wanna kinda shape it up and the side shape it up. But the top, so it looks good from a distance uh, and up close, is we, we come in with, uh, with the head trimmer and go right there at the joint. So let's start that and show you exactly what we're gonna do. I just finished up hedge trimming this uh, Ligustrum hedge. You can see pretty flat on top. Uh, we can do a little bit more cleanup on here, but you get the idea. We've used this mortar joint right here is our guideline. You got a pretty straight hedge. Looks pretty nice, aesthetically clean. Uh, you got a buffer about a foot in the back so you can get your debris up, and so it's easy to maintain going forward. You can get back here relatively easily. So, good tip uh, trimming up a hedge in your yard. If you uh, use your mortar lines or your siding lines, uh, makes things a lot. Uh, easier to manicure and, and get that nice flat top. If you have decorative grasses in your yard, just a quick tip on how to address them. Typically, you're going to cut these back in late February. Uh, if you haven't cut them back yet, cut them back no less than a foot from the ground. Uh, that's because you have new growth coming from the bottom and you don't want to uh, expose that to any harsh uh, cold conditions if we have a deep freeze. So cut them back to a foot. Uh, if you have a handful of them, cut them back so they're all the same height so aesthetically they look as good as you can get them looking. And uh, you can use hedge trimmers, you can use shears, uh, just nice clean cuts, leaves you with a nice great look. So we're in a mulch bed here and you can see that there's some weeds and there's some grass exterminated, uh, most likely from overseeding and aerating. Uh, might have got here by wind, rain, or it might have just been sprayed a little bit uh, over here on the side. Anyway, we got a D-ring uh, weeding tool here. You can get these at your local hardware store. We've found these to be awesome. Rather than bending over and pull weeds, when you pull weeds, you really want to get the roots so that they don't grow back. So what this does is this just goes right underneath the weeds, and I'll demonstrate. Um, but awesome tool for weeding, saves your back. Just come in here, it just goes right underneath. Awesome tool, just sharing some of our tips. This is something we do, makes our job a heck of a lot easier. And then you just take a hard rake or a leaf rake and you get this debris up and then you rake out everything that you've turned over in the bed and you cover it with mulch. But again, a D-ring, weeding tool, awesome tool. Next tip for y'all is to show you how to do a nice hard edge on the bed. And uh, we hard edge, what it is, is it's creating a catch basin down here. We cut a few inches into the grass right here create a catch basin so the mulch kind of tumbles down into it so if it rains the mulch isn't going anywhere and first thing we're going to do here we're going to do a section probably like four feet i'm going to come in here so i'm just going to pull back some of the existing mulch we pulled that mulch back so then we're going to come over here we have some nice spades these are called ace of spades we get them with our Local nursery, Colesville, heavy, heavy duty. They're awesome. They got some weight to them. You can use a garden hoe too, uh, but if you need any kind of, uh, you know, landscape equipment, Colesville Nursery up in Ashton is great uh, with their inventory. But what we'll do here, what I like to do is I come in here, is just come in, and I like to go on a slight diagonal, and I let the weight of the tool kind of, I pull it up and it just falls. 
and you just delicately come along here. You want to have just a nice clean line. Pull this back. So I've done this, and I'm going to come back in and refine it again. So after I've done that, I've got a nice clean edge, but you got some grass hanging over. So as a responsible landscaper would, I'm going to put on my safety goggles here before I start up my equipment. And we're going to line trim along here, along the edge. Line trim, you gotta be careful. This line trim trimmer spins like this. So when you pick up RPM, you gotta look at where any debris might be going. So look out for windows. I'm gonna come along here gently. And I've got a nice hard edge there with a nice manicured, crisp, clean finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this debris out of here a little bit. I'll pull this back. I'm gonna come in here with some mulch. Typically, we would be using pitchforks, but just for this demonstration, get a little bit of mulch in here. Nice ground mulch. We kind of come down in here. Could use some of the old mulch. And then what we typically do is come back in with the pitchfork. We refer to this, to this as contouring. So we tap the mulch down. Nice clean finish. So that's how we hard edge typically. That's how you can hard edge at your house. Uh, pretty easy to do, but just makes for a nice clean finish. Really delineates the lawn area from the uh, mulch bed area and uh, leaves like a, just an awesome aesthetic for your mulch bed. So at your property, there's probably a handful of shrubs that have some new growth um, in early spring. This has some shooters coming off here. Um, you could use a hedge trimmer to get a nice clean cut, but if you do that, these elongated leaves get cut in half. I've, I've ripped one here. And what happens is along the edge here, that'll start to burn, especially as the temperatures get hot. So the better thing to do is use hand pruners such as these. And the best thing to do is you're coming in. You don't want to come over here and just make a blunt cut and leave like a stick hanging out. You want to go into the plant a little bit and cut. And also what you want to do is you want to cut right above the leaf where the bud is. So if you come in here, you have a little bud right there, right above the stem of the leaf. You want to come in like here and cut on diagonal. But then that cuts low enough that you lose the cut. It's not standing out like this one I cut here. You want to go inside of the plant and just cut. So I'm going to do that. I'll be quick because I've done a lot of this. Just kind of come through and hide your cuts. And what, what the goal is here is just trying to get rid of the shooters, the taller stems like this. So come in, keep going. And work your way around the plant. You can't put back on what you take off, obviously, so do take your time, not a rush. And this is a great way, just going across your property. They got these hand pruners that I'm using. Just go up to your local hardware store. Uh, we like to use steel products. Uh, a lot of different hand pruning tools available. But I'm just going through here. And I'll get all these shooters out when I'm done. This will look nice and uniform and tidy, but it'll still have a natural shape. So, uh, great way to cut your, uh, your shrubs throughout uh, the yard. We're keeping the natural look. We're out here around the ivory silk lilac tree, the base, and typically sometimes we'll have a mulch ring around this tree, a tree ring. Uh, we don't, and it's just an aesthetic choice. Uh, and what we're gonna use here is the HSA 25. It's a, it's a small uh, mini trimmer made by steel. Two attachments, this is one of them, clicks right in. You could take a line trimmer and go up here, but you risk nicking the tree up. So the best thing to do with this, it's almost like a, a hair trimmer. If you go to the barber shop, just come in here, you can manage, you can get this grass cut down real nice, whatever height you want it. And you give yourself a safety zone, if you will, so that you can bring the lawn more close enough to this. 
you're not going too low with this. And you're giving yourself a nice buffer around the tree. Looks nice and manicured. Good to go. This is also great to use around fence posts, around mailboxes, uh, light posts, so you don't nick the bottom up with the line trimmer. You get a nice, clean, aesthetic look. Um, we'll show some other uses of this tool uh, for trimming uh, topiaries in the yard uh, and doing some, some quick just trimming on your uh, uh, plants that, that really uh, don't need to keep a natural look and might just have a few shooters. So we'll go to that next. Thanks. Looking at another use of the HSA 25 here from Steel, working on topiaries. And I'm not going to cut too much into this, but you can see you have new growth kind of kicking off the side. This is a great tool to quickly and efficiently address that. I feel the best way is to go down. All these, all the growth is growing up. It gives you a better look and perspective too. Nice clean cuts, and I don't want to take too much of the growth off. I'm just getting some of the stuff coming off the side. But rather than doing step by step with pruners, this HSA 25 by steel, this mini hedge camera with these two attachments, really does a great job. And I'm just gently kind of eyeing stuff, figuring out what I want to come off, and working around the respective topiary. So there's that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop this attachment off and we're gonna add a new attachment and I'll meet at the next site to show you how to use the other attachment. Showing you another use of the HSA 25. We're here with the longer hedge trimmer attachment this time, clicks right in. This is a Taylor, uh, a Taylor U hedge right here. And what we're gonna do is we manicured this over time. It looks pretty good on top, just a few pieces that are kicking out. So this is a great piece of equipment for this hedge because of the scale. It's a smaller hedge, smaller piece of equipment. You don't want to use an unweirdly big hedge trimmer on this. It's just, you know, this just makes it more efficient. So you can hit the smaller area. So we're coming in here. And I'll just do a little trimming here. You really just get this dialed in and get it back to where I want it from the shape perspective. Easy cut. You know, it'll cut through about this size a branch the size of almost a pencil. Anything that's gonna get in between those teeth, it'll cut. So we're gonna come over here, we'll just keep going. See how nice it cuts though. This tool is a great price point too. I think it's like 125 bucks. Comes with a carrying case, two attachments, and a battery pack. It's got two hour run time. So it's really great for just kind of touch ups in the yard like I'm doing right now. Again, you can get it at the local hardware store, Pleasant here in Richmond, carries these. But I'm just going across, Any, anything sticking out, I want to just get a nice clean face on here. This is kind of sticking out, so I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of that. I'm not going to hurt anything. You see how this is sticking out here? And we'll test the, the diameter. So you got to about that that thickness so just another quick video here it's a great tool to get this dialed in and really any shooters on any plants camellias uh, it's great for perennials it's good for grasses uh, such as liripe you can grab it hold it uh, you only need one hand using it so you can push stuff out of the way get in somewhere it's really a great tool uh, use it a long time um, so I just wanted to share that with you and we'll move on to some other stuff. So we're here in a planting garden and we're going to share with you a proper way to install plantings. So over here, we've already dug out a hole and what you want to typically do is dig a hole uh, as deep as the height of this, this is Daphne door we're planting, as deep as the height of the plant to so the root ball here and about one and a half times the width of the respective plant. So we've dug the hole. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we've got some good premium topsoil, organic nutrient rich compost mix. This is Scott soil. Top, it's listed as topsoil, but the, the texture of this is really a good mixture. It's not hard packing topsoil. It's, it's really a mixture of topsoil and compost. But see that dark, nice soil. 
perfect. I want to get a little bit of good soil in the bottom. Then I'm going to come over here and get this out of the container. So once we're out of the container, gently lay it down and you want to kind of take your hand and massage these roots. And what this does, it opens these roots up that have been compacted, makes them loose so that once we plant, these roots can easily root into the nice soil, soft, uh, you know, premium tops of organic nutrient rich compost that we just laid. So we're gonna get this in. So this is going in the corner over here. So first thing I wanna do is step back and I wanna look at this. That's not the right side. You, every plant has the best side. See how it's open right here? So I'm gonna twist this. I'm gonna step back again. And if you're with somebody, it helps, but I like the way that looks. I'm gonna look at it from the left. I'm gonna look at it from the right. I'm actually gonna tweak it just a little bit more. This is all kind of your preference. Step back one last time. Yeah, I like that. Next thing you're gonna notice here is that the top of the root ball is a few inches higher than the existing ground right here. We're going to add mulch here and maybe some more soil here in time because we're going to plant bulbs all down the side here. So that's about where I want it to be. Typically, you want to have it an inch and a half above the ground line, the top of the root ball, because you're going to add mulch. And you don't want to stack a lot of mulch around here, this root flare, because if you do that, mulch holds moisture and it can rot the base of the trunk right here. So this is kind of where we're at. So we're going to get this nice soil over here. Put some little around all around this plant. Here. You can massage this a little bit too. Sometimes there's extra soil on top of a plant. So we're gonna come in here like so. And gently pat it. You don't need to pack it too hard. I'm not planting the big tree that's gonna get caught up in the wind. By not packing it too hard, you allow these roots to grow. And you get about three inches on the outside. It has good soil, so they'll hold moisture. And then these roots will grow into that soil. And then it'll be nice and established. And it'll live on its own. So then we're going to take some mulch here. So this is the way, right way to mulch. You want to come in here. See, I barely have any on top. See that? I'm gonna put just enough on top. And we'll mulch this whole bed. This is more for demonstration. But kind of come in. And then again, like we did earlier, we'll contour all that mulch. Get a little bit more on top over here. Being very careful not to put much at all around the root flare. And then we'll water this in. We give watering instruction with all, with all new plants that we install. Typically, the rule of thumb is just to keep the soil nice and moist. Don't let it dry out to ensure that the uh, expected plant is getting moisture, getting nourishment, and uh, good to go. So that's how to plant a plant properly and uh, mulch it properly and uh, just water it from this point. Good to go. Another tip we want to share with you all is uh, the application of bloom power uh, fertilizer to your blooming shrubs. Uh, and what we use uh, for that application is Miracle Grow uh, Flower Food uh, Bloom Booster. And what we do, there's directions inside. We mix it accordingly in our uh, rain can here. And we have gardenias here, um, Crown Ghoul Jewel gardenias. We have blooming pears. And then we have some roses over here, which we're going to install in this cutting garden and some jasmine. So all this is gonna get an application. Uh, we've measured accordingly. Again, miracle Grow. Uh, you can buy this at your local store. So we're just gonna come through and give every one of these guys a little bit. And the application instructions are on the respective bag as to how much and how often you do this. We're just giving all these guys just a little bit of food. We can have some nice profuse blooms here in the next month or two. Get rid of these last guys. And that's it.
So another tip for y'all is you get your garden, you get your yard ready for spring. Thanks. So last tip of the day we're going to share with you. We're going to show you how to put nice straight lines in your lawn so you have a nice pattern back and forth and make everything look really tight and look manicured. And what you're going to do, you don't look at the ground when you're walking. You're going to pick an object in the distance. So in this instance, there's a tree over there, a styrac tree, the wider tree over there in the distance. I'm going to walk right towards that. I'm going to get my straight line. And then once you have a straight line, then you work off the wheel lines to go back and forth. And if you ever need to come and adjust, if your line gets a little crooked, just pick an object in the, you know, in the distance and walk towards that and start it again. I'll give you a quick demonstration of that. And this will wrap up our uh, how to prep your yard for spring little video here we put together for you. Appreciate your time. Thanks.